Hey gang, welcome to your ninth Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to have a look at for loops. Okay, so there might come a point in your code when you want to cycle through or loop through some kind of collection of data. For example, you might have a list of users, you want to cycle through those and you want to do something with each user in that list, such as attach a property to it or maybe just print it to the console. So we can use loops to perform this kind of behavior and there's different types of loops. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a type called for loops. So I've already created this loops.py file in the lessons folder. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create some kind of collection of data. In this case, a list. So let's give this list a variable name. I'm gonna call this ninjas and we're just gonna store some names in here, okay? So the first one is gonna be Ryu, then Crystal, then Yoshi, and then finally, I don't know, Ken. Okay, cool. So now we have our list right here, and there's four elements in it. So if I want to cycle through or loop through this list and gain access to each individual element and then do something with it, I'm gonna use a loop to do this. So we're gonna use specifically a for loop to do this. And the way we do that is by saying for, and then I'm gonna write something here and then explain it. I'm gonna say ninja in ninjas. So this is how we write a for loop. And what I'm saying here is for, and then I'm giving each one of these a singular name here. I'm calling each one a ninja because they're in the ninjas collection, right? So I can make this thing up here. I can call this X if I want, but I'm calling it ninja because it makes sense to me. It's a singular of the collection. So I'm saying, okay, so for each ninja right here in ninjas, so this is the name of the collection right here, then I'm gonna do something. Okay, so if we had a collection called, I don't know, uh, pots, um, and we'd say each pot in pots or something like that, right? Does that make sense? So this naming convention is just something I use. This has to be pots because this is the collection we're cycling through. But again, this could be anything. It could be tea, whatever you want it to be. Either way, I'm going to say ninja in ninjas. So then we want to do something with each ninja. I'm going to do a colon now, and now we have to do a code block. And again, this has to be indented. So in this code block, we can have access to the individual ninja each time around. So we're going to cycle through this list, and each time around in this code block, we're performing some kind of code for each individual item. And each time around, this ninja variable right here is going to refer to the element that we're cycling through at that moment in time. So I could say something like this, print and then the ninja. So if I save this now, and I'm gonna run this file, so I'll say Python, and then it's called loops.py. What it's gonna do is cycle through this list right here and print each one of the ninjas, okay? Make sense? So as our code gets a bit more sophisticated, we're gonna eventually pad this out and make more code here in this code block and do more with the actual ninjas or whatever we're cycling through. But for now, that's just a simple example. So I'm going to go on now and do another quick example. I'll comment this dude out for now. And I want to show you how we can cycle through maybe just a portion of a specific list. So again, I'm going to say for, and then I'm going to say ninja in ninjas. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to say print ninjas. But this time, what if I only want to cycle through or loop through a portion of this list? Well, remember when we looked at slicing lists? We had that kind of square bracket notation. I can do the same thing down here. We could slice this list right here. So we're only cycling through a portion of it. So I could say, for example, I want to go from position one, from index one, and then up to index three, not including index three. So that's going to go from here because remember it's zero based. So this is index one up to, but not including three. So it's going to print out crystal and Yoshi one and two. So let's give this a whirl. I'm just gonna run this program again. And this time, oops, because I'm printing ninjas and not ninja. Okay, so let's run that again. This time we just get Crystal and Yoshi. Cool, so that's how we just cycle through or loop through a section of a list using this slicing here. So let me comment that out again. And I'm gonna run through one different example where we're just gonna basically add in some additional logic so we're not just printing out a name. So for this case, what I'm going to say is for ninja in ninjas. So exactly the same so far. Then we'll do a code block. Then what I'm going to do inside is I'm going to check if 
the ninja at any point in time when we're cycling through this data is equal to a specific name. So I'm going to say if ninja is equal to, remember, that's the comparison operator, double equals, if it's equal to, and then I'm going to say a Yoshi, which is in there, the third element, if that is the case, then we're going to do something else. So we have another nested code block in this if statement. Remember, we learned about if statements in the last tutorial. So this time around, what I'm going to do is print, and then I'm going to use a formatted string, so f, and now we can output variables in here. So I'm going to output the ninja, first of all, which will ultimately be Yoshi, because this only runs if ninja equals Yoshi. And then what I'm going to say is hyphen, he is a black belt. So we're just letting people know that, you know, if Yoshi is in this list, he's a black belt. Okay, so there's the if statement, very simple. And then what I'm going to do is a little else down here, where if it's not Yoshi, if that specific ninja is not Yoshi, we're just going to print the ninja instead without letting someone know that this is the black belt. So let's save this again, run it, and we should see Ryu Crystal Yoshi. And then because this if statement kicked in, because ninja at that moment in time, during that cycle, that iteration, ninja equaled Yoshi, then we print this string instead of just the ninja, okay? So one more quick thing I wanna show you is the break keyword. So if at any point in time, when you're cycling through your list or looping through your list, you want to break out of that loop, then you can do using the break keyword. For example, if we come across Yoshi at any point in time, I wanna print that out and then break out of the loop so that we don't carry on and Ken is never printed out. And we can use the break keyword to do that. Dead simple, that's how you break out of a loop and then anything else in the list or collection is not gonna cycle through this uh, for loop, okay? So let's save that and just give it a whirl. So Python loops, and now we get Ryo Crystal Yoshi Black Belt, but not Ken, because we broke out right here when we came across Yoshi. All right, so there we go. That is four loops in a nutshell. In the next tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a different type of loops called while loops.